Hello, friend. Thank you so much for joining us once again right here on the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast. I'm Mike McCurry, your host. I greatly appreciate the fact that there are hundreds, if not thousands and tens of thousands of people that are listening right now on over 100 radio stations across America and the world. I greatly appreciate your listenership and investment of time. I'm going to ask you, if you would, to grab your Bibles. We'll begin in the book of John, chapter number 20 in just a moment. John chapter number 20, while you find your place there, let me encourage you to join us October 1st of this year, 2022. That's a Saturday. We will be celebrating the grand opening of our brand new building in Odell, Illinois, We would love to see you there. Let me extend a personal invitation to you from all of us from the BTI family, Bible Tracks Incorporated. It's been around since 1938. The ministry started in Iowa, if you can believe that, and some 40, 50 years ago moved to Bloomington, Illinois, and has been there for decades. And God has allowed us to invest in and renovate a beautiful facility, just absolutely stunning where God has brought us from. Really, this ministry, like some tech startups of yesteryear, began in basically a garage, just a small little place. And to see where God has it now in a beautiful facility of 6,000 square feet or thereabouts, an amazing storage facility for the gospel tracks that will very quickly be sent around the world. We're excited about what God has done for us, and we pray in faith, looking forward to what he will do in the future. I'm going to ask you, if you would, to consider joining us from 1 to 5 p.m. on Saturday, October 1st. I'll give you an address of where you can join us. Let me counsel you. This is not our mailing address. This is not where you would send postal things to us. But this is our physical address. At the conclusion of the program, the announcer will give you our P.O. box and all those things. But here is where you can join us on Saturday, October 1st. It is... 603 West Prairie Street. That's 603 West Prairie Street in Odell, Illinois. 60460. One more time. 603 West Prairie Street, Odell, Illinois. 60460. Look forward to seeing you there. Free food, fun, fellowship, and friendship. While you turn your Bibles to the book of John, chapter 20, let me tell you about this gospel tract I'm holding in my hand right now. It's called Seriously Speaking. This gospel tract called Seriously Speaking, it really is an interesting one because at the very bottom of the front cover, it says this, Seriously Speaking, you may be sincerely wrong. Well, there are many things that I've been wrong about in my life. There have been times that I've had to, what do they say, eat crow, put my foot in my mouth. But there is one subject, one eternal subject, that I most certainly do not want to be wrong about. I don't want to steer other people wrong, but I definitely don't want to be wrong for myself either. And that is the question of my eternity, the question of your eternity, the question of where we will be when we take our last breath. Will it be heaven or will it be a place called hell? Well, this gospel tract explains that you may be, despite your best efforts, despite your good intentions, seriously speaking, you may be sincerely wrong. The question it presents in the front cover here, inside the front cover, it says, be sure you are right. The question is asked, can one, can a person be saved from hell and go to heaven by trusting in good works and religion, even sincerely trusting in good works and religion? The Bible tells us, and this gospel tract explains very quickly, that no friend, good intentions, being good, trying to limit the amount of bad you do, and making sure that your goodness outweighs your wickedness, that is not a recipe to go to heaven. Let me encourage you, if you would, to visit BibleTracksInc.org to order some of these gospel tracks today. If you have any more questions, please or stay tuned for the announcer at the close of the program. He'll tell you all about how you can contact us if you have questions about your eternal destiny. We are in the book of John, chapter number 20, verse number 24 and 25. The Bible says this, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, 
we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. That's John 20, verses 20 through 24. The thought that we introduced yesterday on the broadcast is this, in his hands. Well, Thomas did see the print of the nail in his hands, but I ask you, what is in God's hands today? We introduce the fact that each person, under the sound of my voice, that knows Christ as their eternal Lord and Savior, you are in his hands. I mentioned the book of John, chapter 10, just 10 chapters previously. Verse number 29, the the Bible says, My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. You know what I love about this particular verse? is the fact that no one, not the evil one, not the accuser of the brethren, not the devil, there's there's no prince or power of the air, there's no government that is powerful enough when you are on God's side. Not only can you not be plucked out of his hand, you can't jump out either. No matter how far you get, God is still there. The illustration that I love to use for this particular thought is this. When I'm walking through a busy shopping complex or maybe a parking lot, my girls understand that the McCurry family has a rule. When we're walking through a parking lot and my five-year-old, almost five-year-old I should say, and my three-year-old were walking there, they are required to hold my hand or their mother's hand. Now think about this, if I were to put my hand out there, maybe just extend my pinky to them, and they wrapped their little hand around my pinky, and we were walking through, that would provide some sense of security. I would know they're there, they would know I'm there, but should something happen, if they were to be in any danger, I would have to reposition my hand to be able to grab more firmly onto theirs. You see, they're not really in my hand. I'm in their hand, if that makes sense. And so I require them to allow me to hold their hand. Sometimes they just want to hold on to my hand, but I tell them, no, no, no. I am going to wrap your hand inside of my hands. What that means is that if somebody with ill intentions came up and wanted to snatch them out of my hands, can I tell you, the strength, I'm not some, some macho man or anything like that, but I can tell you that the father in me, the daddy in me, I would be holding on with all my strength because they are in my hand. If they only had the strength of their own hand, if they were holding on to my little pinky there and they were holding on with their little hands, can I tell you that that alone probably wouldn't keep them from being snatched away at a moment's notice? Or, realize this, if they were holding on to my hand, they could let go at any time they want to, but I'm so very glad for the fact that not only do I hold them in my hand, but God holds me in his hand. Understand this, God doesn't have you on a leash so that he can jerk you up when you've done something wrong. You're in his hand, his soft, compassionate, tender, loving long-suffering hand. You're in his hand, my friend. 1 John 5.13 says this, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Turn, if you would, to the book of Joshua, chapter 4, for just a moment. Joshua, chapter 4, and verse number 23, we see that God's people are in his hands. What about this? There is also great power in his hands. Joshua 4.23 says this, For the Lord, your God, dried up the waters of Jordan from before you, until you were passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us, until we were gone over, that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord." that it is mighty, that ye might fear the Lord your God forever. Have you ever heard the phrase, throwing hands? 
or means to fight. We're going to throw hands. It's kind of an old school thing, but you've probably heard that before. There are some people in the boxing or the mixed martial arts world that they just seem to punch harder than others. Recently, someone sent me a video of Iron Mike Tyson. Of course, one of the greatest heavyweights of all times, one of the hardest hitting men that's ever strapped on a set of boxing gloves. It was almost unbelievable to see him knock people out with what seemed to be one enormous punch. Can I tell you, friend? God's hands, oh, they're in another league of their own. Iron Mike Tyson, as strong of a man as he was in his prime, he's got nothing on God Almighty. Exodus 15, 4 through 6, we'll close with this ver- these verses. Exodus 15, 4, Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. What a mighty God we serve indeed. We've seen that God's people, those that know him as Savior, they are in his hands. We see that great power is in his hands. Tomorrow on the broadcast, we're going to talk about the fact that not only is the present where we are in eternity current, but also eternity future, God's people, great power, and then the present and forever are in his hands. Can I encourage you, friend? If you don't know Christ as your Savior, if you would say, if I died right now, if I slipped off into eternity, I was talking to a young man. I was out knocking on some doors, inviting people to a church that we're at here in Kansas. And I was inviting people. I talked to a young man named Isaac. Isaac, if you're listening right now, I'm going to tell you how much I appreciate your time. 24 years old, Isaac has an 18-year-old, 18-month-old son. I got to explain the gospel to him. Isaac did not pray a prayer and accept Christ at the door there, but I got to go through a full gospel presentation. Can I tell you, friend, I am praying that Isaac comes to know Christ as Savior, and he ends up, if you will, in God's hands. If you're listening right now and you don't know that you're in God's hands, may I encourage you to get that settled before it's eternally too late. There is no greater decision that you can make today or any other day, but let's not push it off. I told Isaac, life is but a vapor. You never know when eternity is going to come knocking. Let's get in his hands now. My prayer is that you have a great day for his glory. Make sure you join us tomorrow on the Bible Checked Echoes radio broadcast. God bless.